Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about the infertility, its causes and the treatment. In this discussion, we mainly cover the polycystic ovary syndrome which is the commonest cause of the female infertility. So let's start. Before going to our discussion, please like, subscribe my channel if you like. What is the polycystic ovarian syndrome and its effect on the infertility? This picture show the one side normal ovary and the other side the polycystic ovary. So what is the infertility? Infertility is defined as the inability to conceive despite the regular unprotective sexual intercourse over a specific period of a time, usually one to two years. What are the causes of infertility? There are the different causes of the infertility. The commonest cause are the female causes which is around 30%, male causes around 30%, combined male and female causes 10%, unexplained infertility in 25% cases and the other causes including 5%. Now in the 30% female causes, the main cause is the ovulation disorder which account around 40%. Tubal factors 40%, endometritis 15%, uterine or the cervical factors 3 to 5%. Now in this discussion we will cover the introduction, epidemiology and the prevalence, rotatum criteria for the diagnosis of the PCO, the clinical features of the PCO, investigations, ultrasound features, health consequences and the management of the PCO which is divided into the general management and specific subfertility management and then at the last we will review and summarize the whole discussion as a take home message. So what is the PCOS? Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a genetic hormonal metabolic and the reproductive disorder that affects the women. It is leading cause of the female infertility. The polycystic ovarian syndrome can also lead to the other serious conditions including the severe anxiety and depression, obesity, endometrial cancer, type 2 diabetes and the cardiovascular diseases. Threefold increased risk of the CA endometrium in the women with the PCOS. Epidemiology and the prevalence of the PCOS. On the general population, around 20 to 30 percent population affected by the PCO. The prevalence of the PCO in the Asia is more common in about 52 percent cases. Cause of the PCO is multifaceted. PCO runs through autosomal dominant trait. PCOS tend to run in the families. One study showed that 46% of the sister of a woman with the PCOS also exhibit the sign of the syndrome. Obesity is seen in 36, 38 to 66% of the women with the PCOS. Now what is the Rotterdam criteria? If the two out of the three criteria are met, the so-called Rotterdam criteria, it is for the diagnosis of the PCO. So the first point is the presence of a clinical or the biochemical features of the hyperandrogenism. So usually hyperandrogenism covers the hirsutism, acne, alopecia, oligoovulation or the anovulation, in other words the menstrual cycle disturbance and the polycystic ovaries on the ultrasound. Ultrasound features are 12 or more follicles in each ovary increasing 2 to 9 mm in the diameter and or increase the ovarian volume more than 10 cubic centimeter. What are the clinical features of the PCOS? The commonest symptoms of the PCO are the hyperandrogenism, hirsutism, acne, alopecia, menstrual disturbance such as in most of the cases patient complaining of the oligomenorrhea in more than 90% cases, amenorrhea in 30-50% to 50 cases, infertility, obesity, asymptomatic with the polycystic ovaries on the ultrasound scan. So these are the different um, clinical features women can present with the PCOS.
what are the investigations for the PCOS? Increase of the normal androgens means the testosterone and the androestenedione. Increase of the normal luteinizing hormone elevated in 40% usually in the slim women. Normal FSH level. Increase of the normal fasting insulin not routinely measured. Decrease or the normal sex hormone binding globulin result in the elevated free androgen index. Increased or the normal estradiol. Increased anti mullerian hormone. Prolactin usually normal, occasionally slightly elevated. Ultrasound show 12 or more follicles in the each ovary increasing 2 to 9 mm in the diameter or increase the ovarian volume which is more than 10 cubic centimeter. What are the prolonged health consequences of the PCOS? Patient may develop the type 2 diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, endometrial carcinoma. Now, the overall management of the PCOS including the lifestyle modification. While in the lifestyle modification, we advise the women to maintain a healthy weight, advice for healthy eating, have a regular health checks with the yoga, exercise to re-energize for the cramps, quit the smoking. When now we discuss about the management of the subfertility. First of all, we counsel the couple regarding the diagnosis, its consequences and its management plan. Again, we advise for the lifestyle changes. Then we go for the pharmacotherapy or it is failed, then we go for the minimum invasive procedures, assisted reproductive techniques, adjunctive treatments. Now first discuss about the ovulation induction. The first line management for the ovulation induction is the aromatase inhibitor which is containing the letrozole or the anestrozole, clomiphene citrate, laparoscopic ovarial drilling, gonadotrophic releasing hormone, role of metformin, inositol. Now the first line treatment, letrozole. What is the letrozole? Letrozole used as the first line drug. It's a new recommendation by the Russia 2018 guideline. The likelihood of the live birth is increased 40 to 60 percent with the letrozole compared to the clomiphene citrate. Its resistance is low. Multiple pregnancy rate low, around 3.5 percent. Hot flesh is low. Dizziness and the fatigue is more in the letrozole. While on the other hand, the clomiphene citrate can also be used if letrozole not available. Clomiphene citrate induces the ovulation in 70 to 90 percent of the patient. The pregnancy rate is lower, 30 to 40 percent. Resistance is high. Adding the metformin can improve the ovulation. Multiple pregnancy rate high, 5 to 10 percent cases. Hot flashes are more. Dizziness and fatigue is less common as compared to the letrozole. Now, how we prescribe a letrozole? The standard treatment is usually a dose of 2.5 mg per day for the 5 days starting on the day 2nd to 6th of the cycle. Ovulation is monitored by the ultrasound follicle tracking. When the leading follicle reach at least 18 mm ovulation can be triggered with the human chorionic gonadotrophin and followed by the timed inductor course. Ovulation is expected to occur 36 to 48 hours after trigger. If the ovulation is not achieved, the dose can be doubled in the next cycle. And how we prescribe the clomiphene citrate? The standard treatment is usually a dose of 50 mg per day for the 5 days starting on day 2nd to 6th of the cycle. 
Clomiphene citrate induces the ovulation in 70 to 90 percent of the patient, but the pregnancy rate is lower 30 to 40 percent. Roughly 15 percent PCOS patients do not respond to the treatment if ovulation is not achieved. After the two cycles, the dose can be gradually increased to 100 to 250 milligram per day. If ovulation is still does not occur, clomiphene citrate resistance is documented. Risk factors for the resistance including obesity, insulin, resistance, and the hyperandrogenemia. In the women with the PCOS who are the clomiphene citrate resistant, clomiphene citrate could be combined with the metformin found improved clinical pregnancy and the ovulation rate. The second line treatment for the ovulation induction containing the gonadotrophins or the laparoscopic ovarian drilling gonadotrophins used as a second line or can be used in the preference to the clomiphene citrate combined with the metformin therapy in clomiphene citrate resistance and no other infertility factors to improve the ovulation, the pregnancy and the live birth rate in the patient with more than 2 follicles of more than 16 mm or 3 intermediate size follicle cycles cancellation should be considered. Risk of a multiple pregnancy high in the gonadotrophins and the risk of the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome also high. On the other hand, the laparoscopic ovarian drilling need the expertise, equipment cost, complication and chances of loss of the ovarian reserves can be used as a first line when it is used for the other reasons. Less chances of the ovarian hormone is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome third line treatment which is including the IVF or the ICSI in the absence of an absolute indication for the IVF or the ICSI women with the PCOS and ovulatory infertility could be offered the IVF as a third line therapy where the first or the second line ovulation induction therapies have failed women with PCOS undergoing IVF or the ICSI therapy need to be counseled prior to starting the treatment including on availability, cost and convenience, increased risk of the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, options to reduce the risk of a ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, myoinositol and the PCOS. The number of recent studies have found the myoinositol to be an effective support in the PCOS and apart due to its ability to improve the insulin sensitivity, distort the hormonal balance, improve the menstrual regularity, reduce hyperandrogenism, influence ovarian function. This has also demonstrated fertility improving effects of myoinositol among the women with the PCOS. Now the take home message. Before treating the PCOS for the fertility, other causes should be excluded. Treatment should also be carried out with adequate lifestyle modification wherever needed. Weight loss exercise are the best long term therapy to decrease the metabolic sequel of the PCOS. And ovulation problems can be treated carefully. Method of a choice should be individualized. Patients undergoing for the ovulation induction should be monitored for the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, metformin and insulin sensitizing agent can be used as an adjuvant therapy in the management of a menstrual disturbance, weight reduction and the ovulation induction. For the ovulation induction, letrozole is the first choice followed by the clomiphene citrate. For the women who do not respond the first line treatment, gonadotrophin, Laparoscopic ovarian drilling are the next line followed by the IVF or the XC as the third line treatment. Please hit the button like if you like the video and give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe my channel if you like what I do. And thank you so much for watching.